I hope this video will be available in our group uh, in workplace after recording, so everyone can re revisit it later. So let's start with presentation. Like uh, I'm working with soft cell like around eight years, probably nine already. And at some point, like uh, at soft cell, we decided to start some activity that can be interesting for many people to start to do something that is like open to everyone that everyone can take a part at it and like create their own things and develop their skills and show their knowledge and like make better networking like share ideas connect with people all this stuff and we uh, started with this open source initiative uh, of course like open source is not limited by software software only helping with open source but like uh, here we are trying to create some infrastructures that can help people to work better with code to develop their skills to find people who can help with their projects and like we have some resources i will show you at the end uh, how we can like share the resources how we can find projects how we can provide our ideas how we can start our new projects on our platforms and like today we'd like to show you one of examples uh, when people uh, decided to create a project uh, they brought a team they develop ideas they tuned the idea tested that implemented and shared it with all the world and now we have this great project and everyone can use it everyone can extend it and to, like develop own school skills so uh guys will try to describe you how was your their journey in this process and probably some best practices uh, how to work with project and like at the end we will have also q a session so everyone can ask something about open source if it's interesting and we will try to answer everything so we have a you, question <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry, we have a question. Uh, if it's possible to say what is the project? Yes, that's going to be so a part of the presentation, I would say. Just wait for a couple mm -hmm. more minutes. Yeah, so I think we can go to that step. Like, nothing stop us. And Roman, please describe the project and ideas sure. that we implemented. Yeah, I think while I would be speaking, Yuri can share the link to the uh, source <laughs> code of the project if anyone would like to check out while we are having the presentation. Uh, so let me start sharing my screen. Please let me know if you can see the presentation. Yep. Yeah, it's okay. visible. Okay. Sorry, my bad. Trying to make it full screen mode. Okay. So... Uh, we're going to talk a bit about the resilience and what can we do in this uh, times like today. Uh, and uh, you have, some of you have seen uh, the uh, description of who we are and why are we talking about this. Uh, first of all, uh, I want Yuri to present himself. Yuri is an uh, application architect. We work both on the same project within uh, SoftServe, but we have some <laughs> other uh, common and different interests. So please, Yuri, uh, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Roman. Hey, guys, nice to meet you all, and thanks for joining this event. As you already might know, my, my name is Yuri Palak, and I'm application architect at SoftServe. In this industry, I'm around 15 years already. I love everything related to software and information technologies. I'm a big fan of Raspberry Pis and other IoT devices as well. Uh, I used to work in the military academy as a software engineer. I have a PhD in artificial intelligence, I am also associate professor in Lviv Polytechnic National University, and I am glad to be here and share my experience in open source too. Yeah, Roman, uh, uh, as uh, as I understand, you are going to do the most of the presentation. Welcome, and please introduce yourself too. Thank you, Yuri. Yeah, we will be uh, passing words to each other during the presentation. Uh, as for me, I worked as a business analyst here at SoftServe. Also, I like to build uh, different projects. Some of them are in investments and uh, smart investment domain. Uh, I'm involved in a couple of pet projects as well. And this interest outside of the uh, main normal nine to five work is also a part of the reason why uh, I have joined this project and why I try to look for different opportunities around me. 
And I also have a hobby and part of my life is dedicated to educating people on financial literacy and on smart investments. That's my hobby and part of my lifestyle. So uh, moving to our agenda, first of all, we're going to talk about what started the idea, what could be reused or maybe replicated on some other projects on how to generate the ideas like that. Uh, what we did with the full scale war uh, hitting Ukraine uh, unexpectedly, somewhat unexpectedly, I would say, uh, the problems we want to solve with the uh, product Git Tank. Now you can see it on the screen. It's called Git Tank. I believe the original name was not related to the tank, but this tank with uh, Ukrainian uh, tractor is a, a symbol of the wartime where simple Ukrainian people fought against the uh, military forces of uh, Russian Federation. And we also had uh, this uh, as our logo to use to, to inspire us to do stuff despite of all the terrible things happening around us. Uh, also, we're going to share you how we did, how we organized the project, what we used, uh, how we ensured the participation and better engagement, and uh, share some lessons learned because, uh, uh, as we all know, uh, it doesn't always, uh, you know, uh, not everything is perfect, but we get some lessons learned and can improve in the future. Uh, so, first of all, I'm going to speak about the initial idea. Uh, as I mentioned, together with Yuri, we work on the same project. It's a quite large product that has a lot of use cases. Uh, basically, every year, once or twice per year, we have the agreed hackathon uh, sprint or a couple of sprints where uh, all the teams are engaged into uh, producing some ideas and working on some projects that could be somewhat related to the main project but could explore ideas outside of their normal scope or the product scope that's agreed by business analysts or product managers so uh, on those hackathons we look for interesting ideas teams group uh, uh, like around some ideas and usually it's a cross-team collaboration so for example we have right now like 13 teams uh, on the main project and people can work in multiple teams switch roles and try to join some other teams that hey they have never worked before and Yuri um, as the you know original holder of the idea he was working on the idea that could help people with uh, large projects that have a lot of uh, teams involved, a lot of uh, repositories involved, what to do and uh, how to make their daily work with uh, pulling, merging the code easier. And he validated that this idea was scalable for other teams and teammates. So it was quite interesting. Yuri did some initial coding by himself, but he wanted to develop this idea further. And as a result of those hackathons, sometimes the top ideas are celebrated with some prizes, but also they could be used and integrated into our future looking backlogs if we could reuse some of that on the main project. So that's how the idea was born. Uh, we wanted to simplify work for many of our developers and reduce the amount of like manual errors when working with multiple repositories. Uh, also, uh, there was the behind the scenes idea of multi-threadedness and advanced logging, and we're going to speak about that a bit later. Uh, so this how it all started uh, with the full scale war. Uh, this was a dark page for uh, many projects um, inside Ukraine, uh, especially. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned, uh, we are working on the large product in the enterprise agility planning tools domain. What it is, uh, uh, it's something many of you work with, uh, like Jira, Confluence, other team level tools. But our tool is scaling that to the large teams that could have thousands and thousands of employees, but they also need to organize their work somehow. And for top managers, middle managers, our uh, tool provides the ability to do that. But that's our main project. That's not related to Git Tank uh, specifically. But it's a big, complex project. So any way we can simplify the workflows for daily day-to-day -day work is beneficial. It could save hundreds of hours of developers' work, uh, which translates into money and into time spent on more engaged activities that are creative instead of doing some manual merging and other work. So while Russia invaded Ukraine, what happened uh, due to security reasons and some policies on the corporate level, we had our accounts blocked from many of the uh, US-based uh, tools and resources. And we had to use some screen sharing, working with our American uh, teammates to ensure that the work progresses. But it was, you know, uh, 
a part-time work. We couldn't do our full-time work because uh, the resources were limited and we didn't have access to that. And uh, we were trying to look for some ways. Okay, it's temporary. Our leadership was fighting back to get, regain access and enable our team back to work. But while all of that process is ongoing, we were thinking, what can we do not to waste our time and energy and still contribute to something that would be meaningful? And uh, we have regrouped in leadership and then in smaller teams to look at some of the ideas we previously worked on, on those hackathons. And uh, some of like three to four ideas were identified as the most interesting ones. And uh, Git Tank presented by Yuri uh, was uh, one of the uh, most developed uh, in terms of the idea and the vision uh, products. And we wanted to join around that and see what we can do. And interesting part is that it wasn't joined only by engineering team uh, representatives. Uh, it was joined also by representatives from other areas, including uh, quality assurance, business analysts, and uh, other folks. And just FYI, I know we mentioned that in the beginning. If at any point you have any questions, please post them into chat. We're going to answer them later after the session, uh, so we're not going to interrupt the main uh, agenda here. So. What we tried to look is to work on something that wouldn't be just, you know, another uh, good, good exercise in improving the skills, but also something that could be actually reused later in that project and that could be sort of sold to the client afterwards in terms of, hey, this is actually useful for our teams, not just for some, uh, you know, team in the ideal spheric bubble. So. This was it, and that's what we were trying to do, organize around that idea. And this is what is Git Tank about? What problem do we want to solve? So whenever you have many repositories uh, and want to keep them in sync, uh, you know, uh, working with many of them causes a lot of errors or manual uh, screw ups or other things. Uh, and Git Tank was going to support many of the important, the most used Git comments to like creating new branch, checking it out, maybe configuring the repositories uh, once and then duplicating that settings to other ones. So also the team wanted to introduce more advanced logging in case of something was uh, you know, made wrong during working with the tool. And uh, sort, sort of, first of all, we identified what we wanted to do, like supporting the most important comments, uh, also working on multi-threadedness because in the initial iteration, it was sequential work. We wanted to make it multi-threaded, more efficient. Uh, enhanced logging to understand and troubleshoot uh, working with repositories and what, what troubles could uh, arouse there. And also we wanted to reduce human error and the amount of time spent on like seven, 10 and more repositories whenever you make sure that everything is up to date and current. So this was the main goal. Uh, what we did, what was the team's engagement? Uh, first of all, we started with a couple of meetings where we gathered everyone and tried to you know, split the roles, understand what's going on. Uh, all of the meeting notes and everything, uh, I joined as the business analyst. I tried to capture the main ideas and decision points. We used our internal confluence first. Uh, this is what you see right now, it's the result. Uh, already um, in the uh, Git repository, but we started from Trello, a free tool that was able to scale for our small team of seven to nine people. Uh, we decided some of the work processes, how we're gonna do, how we're gonna label some tickets. We designed some code labeling. As you can see on the left-hand side, we selected the top features we wanted to work on, like repo status, working on behind the head logic, multi-threadedness, configuration. So we, like my job was to structure the work for the team to define core areas we want to work on because usually developers are very, you know, uh, fired up, engaged, and they want to do this, this and that. But I wanted to bring the scope to this work and do the, you know, phased approach with MVP being the most important. So we started on the process overview, how we're going to do, what is expected from developers, QAs, and one of my teammates, uh, she helped us to organize this into process that we reviewed and agreed to. Then we created the board, starting moving tickets as in as you would do that in Jira or other uh, systems. We used free trial for that. And then uh, QAs created the testing checklist, like what we wanted to test in the tool, how we're gonna test it, what would be the standards, how we would write some test cases. And we started syncing 
uh, every day then it was uh, not every day I mean at the initial kickoff project we synced every day to make sure that uh, everyone knows what to do what's the process what's the progress and then as we progressed we made our calls uh, like uh, every other day so to, to make sure that people have enough time to do their work uh, as I mentioned we identified the main features created some uh, basic uh, product roadmap in terms of what we would like to deliver in the MVP version of the improved stuff. So some configuration inside the application, basic uh, behind the head logic, multi-threadedness, uh, maybe some uh, setup of dependencies between uh, repositories and more advanced logging were on the table. Uh, also, uh, uh, you can see on the right hand, in the documentation section, we identified the ma major use cases, draw some diagrams of the real usage of our uh, team leaders and regular developers that work in many teams on how would they use the tool what would be required and what problem does it solve or what can we make faster comparing to manual work with multiple repositories so um, i worked with my colleagues on the glossary of the project so what it is about what are the details and then we defined some key areas of the product as i mentioned before logging settings and everything and we worked through that as through requirements with some basic designs basic requirements basic acceptance criteria it wasn't ideal uh like i i don't think it would pass any business analysis uh, audit or something but it was good enough so we didn't strive for perfection we strived for let's make it work and let's present something to the client whenever we would have any uh, working mvp version hopefully sooner than later so uh, roadmap, defining the scope, not doing everything at once, doing some prioritization and starting from uh, scratch. Uh, then uh, another improvement was the UI improvement. So first of all, this program uh, had much fewer controls and was uh, uh, a bit less uh, attractive looking. This is on the right hand side. This is our to be looking state. We didn't finish that work, but we started that work. So we were worked on, hey, how we can make the UI better and more, uh, you know, user friendly. This is part that uh, I worked on uh, a little bit to make sure that uh, we would have some interesting representation on each repository. What is the status of the last synchronization behind the head logic, looking through some logs and everything. This was like our intended vision. We didn't finish everything, but that's going to be in the lessons learned section. But uh, in addition to engineering work, that's uh, always exciting for engineers. We did some UX improvements and tested a couple of things uh, to make sure that this tool is more usable. And this was defined as our North Star in how we would make it look in the next phases after MVP. And at least people understood uh, what directions we are moving into and what, what could be helpful there. Um, again, another thing is we had gathered some artifacts, some of those were on Confluence, some of those were in uh, Google Docs, uh, Draw.io and other things, and uh, uh, Yuri was exploring uh, what opportunities GitHub has, and we decided that, hey, for this project to not stay in the Google Docs or wherever else, we can create the Git tank uh, wiki project inside the github so github in addition to all the code details can allow you to create your sort of very basic confluence like space with multiple uh, directories or you know the, the topics you want to share there so together with my colleagues we started migrating the sources and all the details and our requirements from multiple places into one spot that would be the git tank projects wiki and it's available by the main link and the link on this uh, presentation as well we used our image with uh, ukrainians fighting with the tank uh, i know it's not i mean it's not official but it was also uh, inspiring for us to to keep on going another thing we did since trello board was free and we know that sometimes that free stuff gets lost in history and you never know when you're going to come back um, our colleagues helped us to migrate Trello boards to GitHub project as well. Uh, like, as, as I mentioned, GitHub has many additional abilities I wasn't aware of myself. So together with Yuri, with Solmia, with our other teammates, uh, we explored this and basically uh, teammates helped to migrate all the unfinished uh, unfinished work with similar labelings and uh, strategies we used before to differentiate like bugs from features. 
like features from stories and all of that so now it lives in the github and could be refined or worked on further by anybody who would be interested in that project and this was also a good undertaking because we knew that lost access to our main project is a temporary thing and we knew that uh, okay we maybe we have a month maybe we have a couple of weeks we didn't know um, when the main engagement would still kick in so we were happy to contribute to this but we knew that in the future the contribution could get more limited so we wanted to capture as much as we could in the reusable format for the future um, looking at the tech stack and best practices i guess yuri can pick it up and explain a little bit what we used here and what techniques help us to introduce some good practices uh, inside this project yuri please go ahead mm -hmm. yeah thank you Roman. Yeah, as you can see, so the project is built in .NET C Sharp. We use the latest at that point of time uh, version .NET 6. Application is written in WPF to get all the benefits of rich UI with all the animation potential animation we could write and uh, transition between states, so rotation, rotating cards, and so on and so forth that we plan to add to our application. For, uh, also, you could notice uh, tons of different badges on the main page in the GitHub repository. We added them uh, intentionally, and some of them really duplicate each other. For example, we used uh, Git flow, uh, GitHub workflows that we just uh, used at first. We never used that before, and it was uh, like a good opportunity for us to try something new and let our engineers to uh, play with configurations. Uh, like CI, CD, and others that they uh, haven't had a chance to do that uh, on, on the real project because of different reasons. So we added uh, like AppFire for uh, building application. Uh, GitHub Workflow also builds application. CodeCal is used for uh, measuring the code coverage on unit tests. Sonar Cloud and Code Climate are very similar and are using for static code analysis. And so we added that all uh, this idea to uh, learn how it works, investigate uh, what benefits it could do, uh, give us, and also uh, have uh, metrics on our code, as you see. Thank you, Roman. Thank you, Yuri. Uh, so speaking on some of the lessons learned, uh, it was interesting that uh, like from the realistic case, whenever people speak about open source or some ideas outside of the main projects, they usually say, oh, it's hard to gather people, it's hard to do stuff. Uh, I agree to that, but from my experience in this project and in other projects uh, that uh, uh, I'm contributing to, it's usually the best case to find a group of people that have uh, interest in similar idea that could drive them in spite of spending some additional hours or spending some time on the weekends or something it's best whenever whenever you do stuff that you do not force it on people but that people attract to your ideas so this was something that we attracted to we had similar mission to uh, a produce something valuable b produce something scalable that after we regain access we could reuse on our real project and maybe other people could also contribute scale or use it on their projects so driving stuff together and understanding the value is a core uh, idea behind let, let's try to do some new things you are not going to be successful if you just forcefully push people to join your team you should find somebody who at least shares the idea or vision with you uh, as i mentioned with the synergy uh, as much as i like uh, engineers and they helped us to you know build great products without you guys we uh, would be just a bunch of talking heads uh, so as much as i love you all but sometimes uh, people are very disorganized so adding uh, quality assurance engineers adding business analysts to capture all the ideas to drive the prioritization to add uh, some uh, you know uh, structure to the documentation was crucial here as well because this project didn't live in Yuri's head forever now it's documented and it's improved a lot by other engineers contributing to it so uh, it's good that multiple people contributed if you can engage people from other areas to work with you not just with engineers it's okay to kick off with your body engineer but if you can engage people with other areas of expertise the synergy is better and uh, it's like I mentioned here, adding different vegetables to your salad. You can have your favorite, but usually salad is better with several more flavors. Uh, with the contribution, as Yuri mentioned, uh, using those additional technologies and using those tools, uh, it was something that people did outside of the main project. And for many of us, it helped and contributed to the 
uh, subsequent promotions. Uh, yeah, we all are in some sort altruistic and like to contribute to, to help in multiple things, but we also have to think about our career here. And this with open source, you can uh, almost every, uh, every time you can engage in something that's outside of your current project and learn something new. And this was a lot of new stuff for many folks here. And uh, this was helpful because in many areas, uh, contributing to open source or working with some technology is the requirement for you to progress and learn. So also think about yourself and what projects could you contribute to to learn something new. Um, as we mentioned before, we knew that the ability to contribute would vary. And uh, yeah, we had almost full day for that in the beginning of the war when the accounts were blocked and client was supportive and said, hey, just stay safe, do what you can. And we stayed safe as much as we could, but also worked on this project. But as it progressed and we regained some access, we knew that you know the, the momentum would be lost somewhat. So in the beginning, whenever you're planning stuff, please be sure that you set some realistic expectations. Some people can contribute a lot. Some people could contribute, I don't know, two, three hours per week, which is still valuable. So we have to build a good expectation from the start. So people are not going to be mad at each other at the end or at later stages of the product. So as I mentioned before, having real value, not just working on your crazy idea that nobody else validated. So this is more on the product side validation, something that I like to do, but Yuri did this as well through the hackathon previously because he made sure that this idea is not just valuable for him but for other engineering leaders on our 13 teams and it made us work on this with more efficiency because we knew we were solving the real problem and as I mentioned before uh, through like April till June we contributed to this project the most and then the access uh, was regained for majority of us which meant we still contributed somewhat but much less to the project and this is still going to be reality for many projects. Uh, we all like to speak about open source and contribute to it, but be realistic. We returned back to our main job. We still completed this project to the best of our abilities within the time frame. But instead of just saying, oh, yeah, now it's done, let's move on. This additional work we did to capture all the findings, all the artifacts and the workflows helped us uh, to scale this because documentation still lives on. Uh, it's available online for everybody. People can track, can see the progress. And for example, you can contribute to the further enhancements or reuse the source code for your uh, own uh, needs and abilities. Uh, that's all for this presentation. I guess we could answer some questions right now. Thank you. Yes, so like if you have some questions, like you can ask like to this part and as after that i will try to share some of our resources and answer more questions broadly but like i'm not sure if we have a lot of time but still please ask questions so, so may I? so, yeah. so, yeah, so yeah. you publish it your, your code which license do, do you use uh about that part like it depends on the project uh we have uh, like a lot of open source uh licenses uh, that we can use in our project it depends on a need of your project and like we have this information uh stored in our contents but like it's really depend on, on on the project like easiest yeah, one if you want to share yeah. everything it's like your mit right and you can share everything uh, but like there is different things like a patch and other licenses so it definitely like only depends on your project my question was about this that particular project git tank mm. I, I see it's mit license yeah we didn't spend much time figuring out that just added mit as it like commonly used and uh, freely shared with contribution so much Yes. Anything else? Uh, I have already answered this question, but for me, it's not very clear. So why at first place uh, did you have many repositories? Because I was working on some big projects. We have like almost 60 plus engineers, but we have just one single repository for three different projects in different technologies that were like bound and sold together. So I just maybe is this some was, I don't know, historical dependencies, but 
uh, like how I, I can just like it's hard to me for me to imagine situation where someone would have actually to work on several repositories and to synchronize between them. Can you explain it more or? Yeah. Yeah, it's really out of scope for this uh, particular discussion because it's a like project specific, uh, but really uh, the short answer will be uh, we do not all everything here, like it's part of the customer decision. And uh, like maybe the most obvious thing that our repository was around two gigabytes of source code and cloning this repository each time for compilation took time. And the easiest way was to split it because it was possible to split on logical parts. And when developers work on some part of the project, they don't need to compile the whole solution. That's why this yeah. little start work, compiling independently, deploying, and so on and so forth. So we yeah, did yeah, really I, lots of improvements after that. Yeah, yeah. I see. I think your question was actually about. Um, for me personally, I didn't actually got a, an idea. So basically, what what the project do this Git tank. So, um, so I make a, like uh, assumption. So, it just runs as the same Git command to the to the different projects like simultaneously, right? Is it the so, so solution that they yeah. build? So regular uh -huh. use case when developers mm -hmm. work, they need to uh, sync uh, like all seven like we have seven repositories right now. Mm -hmm. Sync all those repositories to have everything compiled and work. So, and for that, they need to switch between seven folders, do at that mm -hmm. seven, seven time and wait. When, uh, the application allowed to do it with one button click, done simultaneously with a couple of seconds instead of minutes. When you're saying sync, uh, synchronize, what does it mean? Like uh, updating to the latest version, right? Uh, like uh, it's it's about how application implemented under the hood. When you click uh -huh. the button, it doesn't uh, execute each command one by one in se in separate repositories. Each repository work independently, and the same uh -huh. command is sent to all repositories at once, and uh -huh. all work at the, at the same time. I see. I see. Mm -hmm. Really, it's very uh, straightforward uh, Git client, I would say. In the very mm -hmm. beginning, it was a small application that I developed myself, uh, for myself, you know, when I was struggling uh, doing that each day, especially when I was managing releases. And uh, after that, it's revealed that not only I'm struggling that way, and other people would leverage using the application. And that's how it started. So just, I, I, I demoed it for our leads at first. They started, mm -hmm. some of them started using it, and then we uh, like created a team and start contributing to that improvement. You know, at the very beginning, it was really not that big idea that it is right now. When we start uh, getting together, discussing, brainstorming, what we could add more to make it like more productive and add features that other people also would like to have, we really developed all that big project that Roman described in the documents with all the ideas mm -hmm. and potential features that we would like to add. I could yes. also answer a couple of questions that were mentioned in the chat. Uh, one of them was, uh, how do we make sure that we attract the right people and how, how much effort did we spend on that? As I mentioned before, we had the practice of regular hackathons. So people were aware of, hey, doing something additional that could be beneficial for the main project. And when war started, uh, what we did was just, hey, guys, let's look through hackathon ideas together. And we conducted several meetings with few groups of people to identify and like git tank is one of the projects but actually people work on several others uh, maybe they weren't that successful or i mean uh, the, the people there didn't have enough of motivation so i wouldn't say we spent too much effort people were willing to do something to show value and we wanted to make sure that our clients saw that hey we didn't just sit there and said uh, doing nothing uh, so people wanted to contribute we just uh, leadership help them to channel the work but if you kick off something from the start maybe your um, strategy would be different for us we had the team that was waiting to do something and we needed to channel that work in your case if you start some idea from scratch it's a bit different story because you can search in the community here you can search with some blog posts or whatever and it, it could be different like for some of the projects outside of this uh, presentation I, I believe founders and those who kicked them off looked for various strategies but as i mentioned it's important to align on what you're doing and what's the value for people that join you that's the same that works for me with some of my uh, investments pet projects and whatever else if you find people around core idea it's better to engage them and a few questions were regarding the english uh, 
as a business analyst, I work a lot with uh, English speaking stakeholders, and that's what's helping me to keep my English on a good level. But basically, I like to read, listen, and do a lot of English in my daily job. So the, the only recipe is practice your English as much as you can. That's the, that's the trick. Thank you. Okay, guys, so let's go to the next part. Uh, I will try to share uh, resources that we have and also answer a couple of uh, questions that uh, I saw in the chat. So I will share my screen only to show our resources here and we'll start with uh, still with this project. So like, as you heard during the presentation, like project is not limited by, by engineers, by some specific engineers, by backend engineer, but like or front end engineer or only engineers. Like it can be also additional work from project management. It can be work from QA side. It can be anyone. Like it can be designers. It can be uh, technical writers. Anyone who can help you with the project. Like if uh, like right now you can see open source software in uh, com its website it's open source like it's open to a whole world and here we keep uh, some of our projects we see that we have like around 42 projects like some of them are done already like finished and like yes but probably someone can fork them and extend like some of them still in progress but like difference like it's not only other projects that we started uh, some projects we start contributing into that and like be simply developing people like it's not a thing to start something from our side and show oh, okay it's only our and only we want to work with this no it's place to develop your skills to show that you can work with docker with java with react with everything that you want and you can do it when you have a time for that so i will try to show you that project that we have right now and if you for example search for tank oh sorry let's why there is no projects on Salesforce? I guess we had some open source project on Salesforce. Uh, yes, we are trying to add more projects. Uh, there, is, right there, is now. No, there is no project with on Salesforce technology listed here. So yes, it's, I it's agree. Even... And it's, a good, it's a great place to add more projects. And we are trying to add more projects from different uh like part of soft serve and we have salesforce so yeah like it's one of directions that we're trying to extend in our uh, open source but yes, we do not yes. have it yet, salesforce it is not it is it is not the only technology that, that has missed, uh, that has missed because yes. i don't see mobile yeah. as well c plus plus and stuff like that so so yeah. it's open field of opportunities and like anyone can add the project here and like as you see uh like here we have a short description of a project, uh, some basic benefits, and here we, we see all contributors. As you see, like we have QAs, BAs, developers, uh, uh, and other QAs, like a lot of people here who took a part in this project. So you can see like that it's not limited by only, I don't know, .NET engineers or something like that. And on our website, we see uh, the number of stars. Uh, for the project forks and issues and we can click on this button to go to the github repo and start using that or contact people or start contributing and what, one of important things with open source like guys started with this project they made some progress but like one of important parts is issues because like by doing some project, you, you you see that okay, you need to extend this, you need to fix this, you need to add something new, and you're creating issues. And what it gives us, like anyone from software or any part of the world can join this project and extend it. Because like if you see, okay, I can fix this part or I can fix this part, you can assign to this uh, like uh, task, start doing something, make PR, like get some review on that one and start contributing. So it's important part to continue with the project because like when you're doing something uh, like, and only you know about that, it's hard to understand what can be extended. It's hard to understand what the idea of the project, but like if you have some idea and you can uh, like write some steps, some important parts that need to be implemented, of course, probably do not have knowledge to implement everything. But like if you start writing down these steps and these parts, then you clearly understand, okay, you need to find someone who know how to work with React. You need to find someone who know how to work with .NET. 
And if you have some issues with grouping all this stuff, you can try to find some PM that can help you with organizer Z or BA who can help you with organizer Z. If you don't know how to properly write the documentation for that, okay, you can ask uh, like someone from technical writers who can help you with writing documentation, who, who can propose some best practices and show you how to better work with that stuff. And same with design, for example, if you don't know how to design your application, you can also ask about designer. And what is good at software is that we have a lot of people, we have like more than 10,000 of people here, and we have a lot of uh, not only engineers, but like people with different skills who can help you with that. And we have a lot of communities and we can share this information, we can search for these people and continue contributing to the project. So as you see, we have uh, like this project and anyone can join this and like one of the important things that also guys uh, touch on the presentation that on this project you can use any technology that you want you can use any version of technology that you want like if you work on some project yes someone asked oh why we have so many different reports or something like that because like projects are paid by customers it's owned by customers and we limited in changing this like if you do not have some specific technology in the project we cannot work with that because like we limited with the technologies that are only in the project like for example if you work only with this library that library that library we do not have ability to work with a new library that uh, like appeared on the market like recently somewhere but with open source you can use any of that like you can start uh, doing your new project with any technology you want to work with um like i don't know machine learning okay like, why not you can start a new project start uh, digging into way how to create models, how to train models, how to predict something based on this model, try to create some application. And in open source, it's possible and no one limited you. And what's important in open source, you can share this information anytime with anyone. And uh, like, if you need to show for your client, okay, that you have some knowledge in doing, I don't know, machine learning or doing some document processing or doing some work with database, you can share this code and you can show, okay, I already did something as in my pet project as some open source, I already contributed, code was reviewed, I got some uh, knowledge in that and I can show like how I can do it in your project, how I can develop this uh, thing in your project to help you make it better. So it's also one important part of open source. So we can learn something new and also use this knowledge on our project and like, one more thing was for open source it's to uh, developing this leadership like sometimes you you cannot um leader like to, to promote to some leader position to tech lead or architect you need to work with people you need to work with organization you need to uh, somehow create architecture for example of the project here on open source you can do that you can uh, create like architecture you can write documentation you can bring people you can coordinate people and you can also use all that stuff as artifacts uh, for your promotion because it's your work, it's your knowledge, you are developing your skills. So it's also a part of like your life and no one will like stop you from doing that. So you can use that for your promotion. And it's not only for you, it's also for company because you are trying to develop yourself, but company use your skills to bring more customers and to work with new technologies and new stuff. And it's also really important. Uh, I saw a question about uh, using open source in projects. Yes, like it depends. Like if we think about our projects, we really use a lot of open source in our project. If we think about uh, languages that we use, for example, for developing, it's also open source, <laughs> yeah, like Python, Go, anything else, like it's open source. We use a lot of open source libraries there too. And it's another way to like, somehow improve, speed up your work. And if this open source project uh, useful for you, why not? And it also was a good point uh, from Romans that it's not um, important, like if we use it as a part of project or is as a helping tool, it can be used as a helping tool to improve like your project. We do not need to include it in the project. Like it can be anything that can help you to build it locally to, I don't know, structure your uh, files, to do something with your project. It's, in, it's not a part of project, but still it's a tool that helps you to do this project better. Okay, it seems like we have 
like an excellent timing. So, uh, Yuri uh, Oleg uh, Roman, thank you very much for your performance. It was really interesting to listen to what you shared uh, with us. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, all materials will be shared with you uh, and hope to see you on our next events. Have a great day ahead. Bye bye. Thank you guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye